Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Sunday, the 2nd of September. Going to talk about majority of today's talk on 91L because it poses the most threat, if you will, to land areas, the biggest risk. So let's jump right in. We will take a look, though, globally real quick. And we see here, I like this mouse over technology, very nice. From the University of Wisconsin site, this is a tropical depression. It's Miriam, not an issue in the eastern Pacific. Then we have Hurricane Norman, and it was at once thought to perhaps be a threat to Hawaii, but I doubt that will be the case at this point. It looks like it will turn away. This is just a quick look at the track over the next few days. It will also be on a weakening trend. Farther to the east, newly designated tropical storm Olivia, and this too will not be a problem for the Baja, Cabo San Lucas, and vicinity, as well as none of the resort areas and other areas of Pacific Mexico. No worries from Olivia. Then we have Invest 91L, which we'll take a closer look at for the majority of the rest of this update here. And then Tropical Storm Florence, which is kind of waiting patiently in the wings, if you will, that's going to be an interesting feature to watch over the next several days, and I'll talk a little bit about that here as we look at the broader scope of what's happening in the Atlantic Basin. First of all, 91L, real quick, why do they call it that? It's just the first stage. Instead of just calling it an area of clouds and showers or a blob of clouds or whatever, the National Hurricane Center gives it that designation 90 through 99 are the numbers used. And it's AL for Atlantic, but we just shorten it to L. I guess we're lazy in the weather world sometimes, and so we just call it 91L. It is the first uh, designation of an area of interest or an area of investigation. So we call it Invest 91L. It's got a 50-50 shot of developing into a tropical cyclone. That means a depression or stronger over the next 48 hours, and then... Better than 8 in 10 chance. Is it? Do you say better than? I guess you would just say an 8 in 10 chance, 80% chance over the next five days. If we click on the symbol there, you get a graphical and satellite view of the systems. There's Florence. There's 91L. If we look at how this plays out on a map, this hatched area is the development area that this could head to. And it's interesting to note that it does kind of extend over here towards Texas somewhat, though I think we will be able to trim that off uh, in the coming couple of days. This doesn't have long to go. A short fuse system in the backyard of the Bahamas, the United States, you know, Cuba. Um, this is not a long tracker, even though this tropical wave did originate from the coast of Africa and made its way all the way over. Uh, not exactly like that, but... Uh, it is a tropical wave, and it's interacting with a strong upper-level trough. Uh, but I think that the main area that this is going to try to develop is going to be in through here, and I'll show you why I believe that in just a moment. Mean, uh, in the meantime, Florence, you know, kind of interesting. You remember when this first formed, it looked like it was just kind of going, going out like that. And you see that it's leaning more and more to the west. And I told you that the longer this takes to develop, and spread its wings and fill the atmosphere with its presence, the uh, the less that the upper levels and the deep layer steering flow would influence it, and the more longitude or westerly component it would gain. All right, so here we go. So there it is. We'll see what happens over the next few days. Still plenty of time, and no, there are uh, absolutely no indications that this will affect the islands uh, in any shape. Uh, may maybe some swells that come out from here eventually, but that's about it. All right, so looking at our analysis here, this is the vorticity signature, and let me just get, let's use the color black. That is the signature for 91L. And what have I been telling you? I'm looking for circles, all right? Something round, not oblong like this feature here. That's a you know that's not going to develop into anything, but this down here, just to the north of Cuba, that's what we're looking for right there, and that's the signature that rounded appearance 
In fact, I should be able to zoom in on this. Indeed, I can. So, you know, it's trying to bundle that energy, that vorticity or spin in the atmosphere. It's bundling that energy together and trying to make something of itself over very warm water all through this region. The water temperatures are more than adequate. The moisture in the atmosphere is there. We don't have a bunch of dry air, no Saharan air layer or anything like that. But the main inhibiting factor is definitely strong upper level winds. All right, so it's hard to make out what's what on this map. So I'm going to try to draw it in for you. I will use blue to help, you know, circle what's what. That's the disturbance right there. That's 91L in a green area, so that means it's fairly favorable. But look how you got this streak of very strong upper level winds cutting down. Uh, and then you have this you know, big upper level low sitting offshore of the Carolinas and Georgia. And that's going, you know, counterclockwise, of course. And so it's in a bad spot overall. But there are indications that things are going to improve in the upper levels, especially in this area as it gets close to land. So this is going to be one of those race against time things where we have to wonder and kind of watch probably every 6 to 12 hours, you know, is going to be what this comes down to. How fast do the upper levels change from hostile to more favorable? And we'll just have to wait and see about that. I'll show you more about my thinking on that in just a moment. So looking at the satellite animation here from the Tropical Tidbit site, definitely, I mean, you can see as well as I can, that's it right there, there's rotation. And, you know, that's the spin that we're seeing right there on the vorticity signature. So it lines up. That's good to know that everything seems to be reliable. The satellite representation, and this is the visible satellite, matches what we're seeing here on the vorticity chart. The greatest amount of spin is located right there, and that's what we're seeing in the satellite imagery. Uh, where is this headed? Well, first of all, and again with these systems, I want to make sure people understand, you know, this is not just about the United States. We have people down here in the Bahamas and it's cloudy and kind of squally at times you know the north uh, coast of Cuba here not as much but you know this will impact these areas first it's doing so now and then of course this will spread uh, towards the southern part of the Florida Peninsula and there will be gusty winds from time to time showers thunderstorms if you have boating plans please be careful out there some of these storms could produce water spouts, uh, certainly some of them that are isolated out in the bands that this develops, assuming that it does, they, they could have lightning. And then, you know, it's Labor Day weekend, a lot of people out on the water, and I want you to be safe out there. So don't, you know, just write this off. Well, it's just a tropical wave. What's everybody getting all upset about? <laughs> it is a bigger weather feature than you are, okay? And if it's bigger than you, it can be a problem. So please be careful out there uh, in southern Florida, the Keys, the Bahamas, as this moves through. And then, of course, the heavy rain that could fall across parts of Florida here over the next day or so as this passes through, that could be problematic. So please slow down on those. I mean, telling people in Miami to slow down, uh, right, not going to happen, but I at least have to say it. That's the dad in me, perhaps. Well, not to mention I've been driving through something like 20 plus hurricanes and you just don't drive in that kind of rain tropical depression rain doesn't matter anyway the broader shot there's florence another tropical wave africa is just loaded for bear uh florence let me just give you again the main thing the longer this stays kind of disheveled the less likely it is to just gain latitude and head out like that and we've seen what the Europeans doing, the ECMWF trying to park it. There's Bermuda, uh, somewhere in this vicinity in day 10. Is that what's going to happen? I don't know for sure. That's 10 days out. But we do have to watch Florence to see what happens, as well as the rest of the tropics uh, east of Florence. September, it was well telegraphed. Uh, ben Knoll was talking about it and others that September would probably be busy, and here we go. Um, so the broader picture again, there's 91L, 
And you can even see you know, that upper level feature. There's the upper level low there. Strong winds coming down this way. I think that'll change. So let's take a look at the model guidance and I'll show you. All right, so this can get a little tricky, but I do want to show you the upper levels here. This is a great, uh, this is what I like about the NCEP site. I can pull up these nice, um, well, they're not high resolution, but they're, they're big graphics, so I can really zoom in and see what's what. All right, so this is the 200 millibar level. What is that? Well, that's way up in the atmosphere where those upper level winds are too strong right now. Okay, so let me outline what's what. First of all, 91L is located right in here. And you know what? Let's just use red to really make everything pop. So 91L is located in this general vicinity. And you can see these strong upper level winds. That was what it looked like over on the analysis chart from the University of Wisconsin. And you've got this uh, strong uh, upper level low sitting over this way. The uh, counterclockwise rotation around that, very evident. And the wind flow this way, you know, it's just uh, trough carved out down here. Very sharp and inhibiting for our system. All right, so now we look at the 5,000 foot level, or 850 millibars. So this is 200 millibars, this is 850, and again, there's our system. Actually, this is the initialization of the 12Z GFS. I think this is a little too weak, but we're, you know, it's nitpicking here, but the, the signature is stronger than what the GFS is showing for what it's worth. It's a little bit stronger than that, but you know, does that make a big difference? We'll see. So this is hour zero. Now let's just move this along to 24 hours out. Uh, there we go. One, two, let's see. It's going to take a minute because it's every hour. There's 12, 24 hours right there. So 24 hours out, the GFS has this uh, across South Florida, like that, right there. So I'm going to circle it, and that's where it's located, the overall envelope of energy. And now, let's do the same and move the 200 millibar out to 24 hours, okay? There we go, there's 24 hours. Look, the upper level winds, where this is located, not nearly as... Uh, destructive. You know, over here they are to the northwest of it, but they're a little bit lighter where it's located. You see what I'm doing here? So this is a good way to kind of break this down. Now let's go back to the 850 chart and let's move it out another 24 hours to 48. All right, they're passing 36, there's 42, and 48 hours. Notice that the vorticity signature a little stronger, but I want to make it clear this doesn't take up a lot of room in the atmosphere. This is still a fairly small system. You remember how large Irma was coming across. And so there's a little bit of a, a worry from me that the smaller system is not going to be as resolved in the robust global model field. A higher resolution model, maybe like the H-Wharf when they start running that, and the HMON, which replaced the GFDL, basically your hurricane-specific models, I'm hoping will resolve this better since it's a fairly small system. I mean, you could fit this vorticity signature in North Carolina, right in the central part of the state. This is not a large system. All right, so let me get rid of that and then circle it again because we're going to forward through to the uh, same thing on the 200 millibar chart, 48 hours out, da, 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 da. there's 36, and there's 48. Look, so it's embedded in somewhat southerly shear, you know, maybe 15 knots or so, but it's also moving in that direction. So the bottom line, the shear at 48 hours doesn't look to be nearly as bad. And if we just move this on out, we'll start with this one and just keep going to uh, 60 hours right there. And then we'll take this out to 60 hours. And it approaches landfall. You know, it's right there located on the southwest side of this developing upper level anticyclone. Uh, so, like in this area, it's very favorable. So, 
Timing. This is what it's going to come down to. Is this a little bit more west, and do the winds become lighter? You know, I mean, we see, you can see as clear as I can, uh, anticyclonic flow developing, a big anticyclone in the center of it right here near the Big Bend area, and um, what would presumably be a tropical depression or maybe tropical storm Gordon, you know, maybe located in here. This could be some good outflow up here. Uh, I don't know. This is going to be tricky. So, you know, pay attention to it. Don't just dismiss it. I'm not making it more than it's going to be. I honestly don't know what the outcome is going to be because it's a small system, because the pattern's changing around it. It could come in as a depression. It could come in as a Cat 1 hurricane. And that, I mean, intensity forecasting is where the least amount of skill lies. And just to keep moving forward, uh, it goes inland, at least on the GFS model here, somewhere in the western part of Mississippi, maybe the Mississippi-Louisiana line, something like that. But that's the center, the energy, whatever. It's a fairly small system. You know, western panhandle all the way over to Baton Rouge, maybe Lafayette. Pretty stormy time coming up. Severe weather, heavy rain, storm surge at the coast. You know the coast down there. You don't need me to tell you. It is vulnerable. You know, an onshore flow, especially everything coming at you from the southeast, that could pile up some water. So this will have impacts. And as such, I'm going to be there. Um, leaving tomorrow morning fairly early, and I'll head down to the Gulf Coast, set up equipment. Our Patreon supporters, our app users, and our members, you will have access to all the live video. I will have the YouTube feed going, the public this time I didn't in Hawaii there was just nothing to show you and I pay for data and I didn't want to use it up in Hawaii so I still have it for this system and there you go that's a you know I'm being frugal the people that support me here on patreon and elsewhere you know you don't need me spending the money right and left when there's not that much of it to spend so I had to be very you know wise in how I did so and now uh, We'll get to see the benefits of that as I will have the YouTube live going, and that's for everybody. You know, There's no paywall or whatever, um, but for our select members and people that have our app and whatnot, you'll have access to the live video and the weather data and so forth. Um, and I'll tweet and do whatever else I do, and we'll see what happens. That'll all begin tomorrow. Um, I will do another update this evening, by the way, another quick uh, video just kind of going over what the Euro showed and what the evening models are showing and then another one early tomorrow morning and then I gotta hit the road I'll have a rental the Chevy Tahoe that I've had for you know all those years that is no longer in operation so I could end up driving down in a sedan or a nice big Ford F-150 who knows once I get to the to thrifty that's who I use here at the airport in Wilmington We'll see what they have available. That could be interesting. Uh, I will certainly argue for the larger SUV or the truck. All right, well, that is it for me for today. A lot going on to keep up with. I'll be posting you know, every once in a while on Twitter, and I'll have another update for you this evening. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have another video blog for you uh, sometime early this evening.